good afternoon and welcome to the Church of St. Margaret of Antioch for the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our entrance hymn is number 266 in the Ignatius Pew hymnal, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy, hymn number 266. <laughs> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and the peace of God our Father, and the love of the Divine Son, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, we acknowledge our sins, so let us prepare ourselves worthily to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have mercy, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord, Lord have mercy.
us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray at all times, go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed, and prudence was given me. I pleaded, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne, and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her. Nor did I liken any priceless gem to her, because all gold in view of her is a little sand, and before her silver is to be accounted mire. Beyond health and comeliness, I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light, because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. Yet, all good things together came to me in her company, and countless riches at her hands. Word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, indeed, the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. And he replied and said to him, Teacher, all of these I have observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking in one thing. Go, sell what you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and then come, follow me. At that his face fell, and went away sad, for he had many possessions. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God? The disciples were amazed at his words. So Jesus again said to them and replied, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through an eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. Have you ever asked yourself that question? What do I have to do to get to heaven? It's a wonderful and a very important question. Perhaps it's really the most important question we will ever ask ourselves. How do we reach that ultimate final goal of who we are as human beings? Or is it a question that even concerns us? I have a feeling most people really don't even think about that. Somehow they some way they think somehow some way we'll get to heaven anyway. But it was a question that burned at the heart of the person, that young man, following behind the Lord, traveling the road with him, watching, waiting for that most opportune moment, listening to every word that he spoke, waiting. And he makes his move and kneels down in front of the Lord so the Lord had to stop and listen to him. He calls him good teacher, good master. Good rabbi. I think our Lord perhaps had a little grin on his face when he said, You really don't know what you're saying. Only God is good. So you are correct in calling me good. And the young man finally gets to ask that very genuine question from the heart. He asked that question not to test Jesus, not to challenge him. A real sincerity of a young man searching. What must I do? Of course, it's the wrong question. But we know what he's trying to get at. And our Lord doesn't give him some secret recipe for happiness and getting to heaven. No special guru advice. No psychic information. No, our Lord asks him, do you obey the law of God. Do you obey the Ten Commandments? And interesting, the list of commandments our Lord mentions omits the ones that move a person from simple obedience to a devotion of love. For St. Mark tells us that having heard of the man's obedience, our Lord looked at him with love. That love moved our Lord to invite this young man to make that one next step to embrace the fullness of the first commandments. To love God so much 
that you love him with your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole soul, holding nothing back, keeping nothing for yourself, saying this little bit is mine, but the rest is yours. Be happy, I'm so generous. What are we willing to give? And relying on the Lord's providence. Of course, for that moment, it was too much for that rich young man. And it says he went away sad. Because he really knew what he had to do. He really knew what he wanted to do. But that obstacle, those possessions, whatever they were, and back then in the day, what was it really? How much? But it was enough to say no to the Lord. There are very few stories in the gospel, perhaps two, where someone actually said no to Christ. Sharing the man's sadness, the Lord explained that the man was seeking the kind of life that the Lord offered. But his affluence held him back. His goods had such a grip on him that he couldn't break free and experience his deepest desire. But there's nothing in the gospel that demands everyone be like St. Francis of Assisi and give away all his possessions. But at the same time, every line of the gospel warns us about the ways of the desire for more be it goods or prestige or luxury or power, diverts us from our true potential as being a true disciple of Christ. We don't know what happened to this young man down the line. He may have been so haunted by the Lord's offer that maybe he did go and sell everything he had and become a true disciple of Christ. He might have concluded that the demands of the Lord were too irrational, too much to ask, so I'll be doing the simple things. I'll simply obey God. But I won't go that next step. This beautiful story calls for an evaluation of who we are, of what we own, and how dependent we are on our material goods. This ownership free us to live and to give or does it tie us down and make us afraid that we may lose everything what are we willing to do what are we willing to give up to follow Christ that next step like that wealthy young man can forget that everything that we have our beautiful homes, our cars, our bank accounts everything is a gift given us. The desire to work hard is a gift. The young man's question was sincere, but it was wrong. You and I, we don't have to do anything to inherit eternal life. Eternal life is a birthright. An inheritance no one can earn. It has the potential to roll us into the company of people who are rationally are generous and blessed. The question that we ought to ask is what must we do to be open to that inheritance that is ours? What tax are we willing to pay on so good a gift? And so we stand now to profess our beautiful faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. To heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Amen. Glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Confidence, we offer our concerns to our loving and our compassionate Father. For the Church and its ministry of healing throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. Let catechists continue to deepen their love of the Word of God, and those seeking membership in the Church hear the Word with open hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Thomas Hallinan and Christina Smith, who received the sacrament of matrimony this past Saturday, as they begin their new life together, may they be blessed with many graces through the power of the Holy Family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed <clears throat> from our parish, who have gone before us in faith and love, and let us remember in a special way at this Mass, Chester and Margaret McGuire. May they receive the reward of their goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, we present to God our particular intention. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill us with gratitude, O Lord, for all the things you have done and given to us, even as we ask you to hear our prayers which we make in the name of Jesus, your Son, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 262, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. Hymn number 262. So pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of eternal life. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we are clean. gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and the working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy you never cease to gather people to yourself so that from the east from the rising of the sun to the setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and given you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up, for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat his bread and drink his cup, we proclaim the death of the Lord until you come again. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit 
may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Margaret and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at your passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, for whom we bestow on the world all that is good. For him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> and at the Savior's command, informed by divine teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. For I am not worthy that you should enter under my feet. I only say the word, and so shall be healed.
for communion, you could please form the two lines in the main aisle and come up to me um, one by one, uh, two by two. Our communion hymn is number 106, Christ is the world's light, hymn number 106.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers in his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Monday, of course, is Columbus Day, is the holiday, so the parish offices will be closed on Monday. Next Sunday, down in Toner Hall from 8.15 until 2.15, we will have the uh, our parish blood drive. Anyone over the age of 16 and in relatively good health can donate. Please consider this very generous gift of giving blood, especially, uh, as you know, we need it always, but most particularly in this fall and winter time. Have a happy Sunday to you and to your family tomorrow. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness, snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.